a session you've missed in like six months. Oh, what? Lynn, wow. Lynn, Lynn is almost always always here, and she well, wasn't on Saturday. You probably have the most perfect attendance. But I've seen it on Sunday. Man. Hi, I'm Linda. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, pretty good too. Roll. All right, are you guys? I might go. <laughs> Bye, Steve. <laughs> Have a good session. See you, Ting. Ting, thanks for helping out there. That was the uh, big help. Yeah, I'm here to help. <laughs> All righty. Bye. <clears throat> Set up. Back and exit. <laughs> 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 I'm trying, okay. There we are. All right. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you've finished with the role, and I don't know if Chelsea had said, if you get yourself into a brothel. Oh, um, wow. Perfect. Not forgetting the uh, a pillow or cushion or something similar behind your head to facilitate a neutral spine. Oh, no more. No, my God, man. Steve, I've got a question about the pretzel. Yes, fire away, Linda. Um, I saw. I always try to get both knees on the ground, and I and some. Take both shoulders on the ground and not the knees. But is there a difference? Um, no. I mean, um, I, I, as with all of these drills, that um, what what can often happen with either an exercise or a drill is it'll get broken down into a series of um, instructions, and then people can can get uh, people who just focus on those instructions. Now, what you always have to think about is the is the why. You know what what is this movement or or this posture trying to deliver? Uh, you know why are we doing it? So what we're after two key things. We're after an asymmetrical pelvis. So one half of the pelvis is in full flexion, the other half is in full extension. And then we're after a dissociated spine. So with the hips turned one way, shoulder turned the other. Now, that's probably at, that, at the crux of the, of the question that you asked. Um, so what we're after is the dissociated spine. So <laughs> if you've got the knee touching down and the opposite shoulder touching down, well, then you've got brilliant thoracic rotation. Is that possible? <laughs> For some people, pro probably, probably wow. Chelsea. You know, the the, um, the mobility she's got is awesome. I yeah. think um, Brooke as well. Brooke's got awesome um, mobility. Um, but for the mere mortals amongst us, I generally know. So what, what I tend to find uh, is best is getting the knee on the floor and then rotating. Um, one of the reasons for it is a key aspect is getting the rotation in the thoracic spine, i.e., from all of the all of the lumbar all of the spinal vertebrae that have a rib coming out of them. That's your thoracic spine. Uh, you do not want rotation in the lumbar spine. Now, one way to protect yourself against rotation in the lumbar spine is pulling at least one hip into full flexion. Pulling that into full flexion will lock the lumbar spine. And so if you get your knees sorted out first before you rotate, then that means you're only going to be rotating mm. thoracically. Uh -huh. If you rotate before the knees are fully bent or if 
your your flexed hip doesn't take the knee above the belt line, then you're at risk of some lumbar rotation, which is not what we want. Now, as ever, <laughs> you're never going to get a short answer out of me. Uh, mm -hmm. so, did, does all of that make sense? Yeah, totally. Now, yeah. Thank you. Now, you know, you generally get people at one end of the spectrum or, or other. People just want, no, no, tell me what to do. And then the other end is, no, tell me why. Tell me why I'm doing it and how it works. Otherwise, I can't remember it. That's, mm -hmm. you can probably guess the way my head works, you know. And I guess it's good warm, warm up. Well, you, you know, there's there's advantages and disadvantages to um, to thinking about it in, in both ways. Mm. Like, for instance, you, you can you can often learn a lot quicker, certainly at the introductory stage, if if your mind can if if your thinking can just take on instructions and you can follow them. Um, mm. I, I I can't generally follow and or remember instructions if I don't have a cohesive idea of the whole. Now, once you get a cohesive idea of the whole, well, then that actually informs what you're doing a little bit better. But sometimes that can be too big a task, getting that overall idea, you know? So it's um, different strokes for different folks. Although if you're ever unsure which mm. one to do, do it my way. Mm. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> yeah. Mm. Notice I said that while my wife was out the room. <laughs> mm. Righty oh. Next one, and I'll um pay a little visit on on a couple of you, or certainly if anyone wants to ask any questions about it. Um want to do some movements and postures around quadruped and bird dog in particular. So I want you to um, get into the quadruped position in using what I would call the classic sequencing. So start in supine, come into the sphinx, or alternate your arms into the sphinx, bring the leg up to the side, and then other leg under and get yourself into quadruped. Excellent. Knew I could rely on you, Santiago. Now, Rob, if you look at your posture there, you can see how certainly the right hand is outside of the shoulder, but if you want it underneath. Now, if you get your hands underneath your shoulders, perfect, mate. That's yeah. when your arms, um, well, if you've got vertical arms, that's going to get your shoulders the highest. If your shoulders are highest, that's going to get the correct spinal shape as the spine has to come down into the, uh, into the hips, exactly like Linda is showing perfectly there. Mm. So once you've got into uh, quadruped, we want to go into bird dog. So if anyone is, is not comfortable with bird dog, just take your leg to the rear. And if that's all you're comfortable with, that's great. Just stay there and breathe. But if not, you can either raise the arm or, as we're hoping Timor's going to do, he's just going to show his newfound competence in just lifting a hand. Now, remember, when we're saying about spinal position, if that head comes up, that's going to put the lumbar curve there. And generally, you're going to feel an instability. Now, remember what I warned against, Timor? Don't bring the arm all the way up. Just bring it just a little off the ground. And then once you are totally competent with that, where you can do it every single time on demand, then you can start thinking about lifting it higher. So make sure you get integrity in that quadruped first. And just...
what you can also do to help with this, go back to the quadruped. <laughs> Remember, it, it's not successful until you do a successful exit. But if you go back to the quadruped, uh, Timo. Yeah. And it, it's good to be challenged like that. And, you know, we always say challenged but successful, but challenged and almost successful does give you a good amount of awareness. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take the leg into extension at the rear, keep the toes engaged. That's it. Now breathe in that position. And now take the hand. Position. Now you can lift that left hand up whenever you're ready now. Should be more stable. That's it. Now remember, never go so close to the edge that you lose control. Yeah, no, it's getting there. Yeah, that's it. And now, so do the same on the other side. And once you've got a, a, a good bit of practice with that, then you can potentially try lifting that leg. Okay. That's great stuff, Gary. That looks rock solid. Oh, uh, really good, really good, Gary. But just try, try it with just the leg first. And make, make sure those shoulders are over that over that arm and so rather than lifting the leg think of reaching out with it so you, you're trying to reach as far behind you as possible so you can put it into the air but be reaching behind and make sure those shoulders are over the hands i mean if i um that's better because that's good keep those shoulders over the hands now lift that leg up and reach it out. Now keep the hands down, hands down, hands stay down. Just practice getting in that position. That's fine. And so like I was saying to Timor, if the challenge starts to get too great or if you think you're, you're going to be uncertain whether you can keep control, just lower the leg down. And just so you can get the experience of being challenged. Excellent. Keep the shoulders over the hands. Keep thinking on that when you lift that leg up. And if you feel threatened, drop the leg. Never lift the hand. I don't want you to lift. I don't want this up until next week, potentially. I don't want you to, to lift the hand and the foot as well. You only want to go to that once you are totally competent in lifting the leg and being able to maintain the position. And that's so you can reliably reproduce it at the drop of a hat. So integrate your breathing, mate. Integrate the breathing. And when you're feeling solid, just lift that leg. And if you start feeling threatened, and threatened is the next level up from challenged, you just lower the leg back down. Great stuff, Gary. Doing brilliant, mate. Does that not feel good, Amber? Uh oh. You're kind of barking now. Hold on. I had to attack you. Yeah. So like I was saying with Gary Amber, I don't, don't want you to see you lifting the hands up until you're totally competent at lifting that leg. Big breath in and then force the breath out while you lift that leg. That's it. Lift it and reach to the rear. That's great, that. 
that's parallel with the torso that's excellent and then do the same on the other side Great, Amber. Really good. Tom, could I just see you go through that? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, you, you, you're not quite getting the um, the hip into full extension, so, so it doesn't go sort of parallel with the... Uh, that's it. That's better. So if you reach out, try and touch the wall with that foot but also counter reach forward with the arm. That's, re that's really good now, mate. Don't, we don't want to bend in that knee. Excellent. Yeah, bang on, mate. That, that I suppose, is the, the top level of competence with the bird dog. It, not only can you hold the position, you can simultaneously reach forward with the hand and reach backwards with the, with the toes. And so, what you, you know, you can almost draw a straight line through the leg, through the torso, through the arm. Let's, let's see that with you, Santiago, because you should be there or thereabouts. Exemplary way of getting into position, that mate. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. And I think that reaching might have made the difference for you. You can tell me, because when I was saw you in the gallery, it looked like there was a bit of a bend in that knee. You know? Mm. But um did does that did you feel a difference there when you were doing the simultaneous reach or um no, I I think I tried to focus on the reach every time, but yeah, I yeah. I, I might, might have missed it at one point. Yeah, oh, that, that's fine. <laughs> Almost had you there, Jules. <laughs> Hello there. How, how did that feel? I just came in just at the end. All oh, right. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All Should right. I start from flat? Uh yeah, well, yeah, I, I would I would sort of suggest everyone. It, it's just it's real good um so it's super good high good drills just yeah. for going through that each time. Like it sure. just um puts a deeper groove in the pattern. Yeah. Hi, Reese. Just doing bear hey. dog at the moment, by the way, mate. Hey, <laughs> Reese has got his Indian clubs. Mm. That's if you saw that real good instinctive move there of the knee coming in under the hip when you almost put the, the moves together. That was pretty good, that, mate. Ah. Excellent, mate. Rock solid. Just reach back with that foot. Make sure it's nice and high. Yes. You'll see the difference if you watch this on the recording. Just when you immediately did that, that leg came up higher, which is you getting more extension at the hip. You know, if, if there's one movement that the Western movement lifestyle, i.e. Like sitting down, destroys and takes away from us, it's hip extension. And that is the most powerful human movement and the one you the least want taken from you. Yeah. I've just got a quick question. I only I thought it was two of them, but I actually only bought one of them. <laughs> Did you? Ah, was that why they were as cheap as they were? <laughs> no, it was really expensive. No way! This one, it was like £40. Are you kidding me? What? Be two of them. What, from, <laughs> from Amazon? Yeah, from Amazon. I, I would say you, you, you can send them back within 14 days, mate. It's I'm cheaper sure. than that, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you can get a pair of them for uh, yeah. 20 quid. 30. Yeah, I think mine was yeah. 30, yeah. Will someone send a link for any for yeah. Indian clubs? Well, um, yeah, I will. Jules, yeah, if you could um, send that over to, well, pop it in the forum. And yeah, yeah, sure. And catch it in yeah. the forum. Yeah, thanks. You know? Yeah, and send, get, get your cash back on that one. Yeah, definitely.
That's good, that team on. That's looking nice and solid. Hey. That's the thing. Get yourself really competent at that. And then the next one is lifting that leg and then just right. engaging with the hand. Right, you on. Next, I want to go into the um, TGU. Take us get up to half kneeling. Um, and we will start with Linda on that okay. one. Now, Linda, do you want yeah. to say if you want to just go back to the start and pay judicious attention? To get in your role first, because that's it. And now, keep, yes, so that was far cleaner. Because yeah. you um, are so competent at this, <laughs> you got a little bit complacent with the, your uh, your early moves. That's oh, great. Then. And come down, and that, that graceful sweep out. That's it. Excellent. And if if you are competent with the Turkish get up, you know even if it's all the way up into standing, doing a half Turkish get up is, is your opportunity to be really self indulgent with getting the movements banged on, and you'll know when you're getting them banged on because you won't feel any challenge in it whatsoever. You'll just gracefully go through each aspect of movement. I think only Tom does that. So now you drive, that's it. You can see that knee come over the toes there. That's all right. And then you push it. Well, you can push him with, with the other hand as well. And but try as well. Because you see there what happened. Go try, go go all the way through and I'll and I'll sort of discuss it in the um afterwards. Now if you pop the hand down, I'll try to do it with just one hand if you can. And where I think you will uh, do better with this, Linda, is if you start from the top yeah. and come down. And so if you come down from the half kneeling position and if, if, you, if you dedicate a little bit of a session just to that movement. I do, that, I do that always during the day. I always yeah. start from the top. Because what, what you can then do is you'll identify the optimum position of the down foot and the down hand for you. Mm -hmm. So what that optimum position will do, it will allow you to sweep that. There'll be enough room for you to sweep the leg out, but also they'll be close enough together to give you enough support. Now, when you were trying to come up out of the position in there, what happened was you had to lift the heel on the down foot. Now, lifting the heel effectively gives you more dorsiflexion. Because I, I, I think you need to come a bit more, a bit further back with that hand. Yeah. Yeah. And you see how that made that, that bit easier? This is the part that I don't get. Yeah. Well, yeah. so so what, what you want to do is get get it so you're coming down from the position. And what, mm -hmm. as I was saying easier, saying before, finding that positional relationship where the mechanics just work, it, it will be that you, you don't have to brace in any way or put extra effort in. The mechanics will just work and you'll get a really graceful transition. When you find that going down, keep everything exactly where it is and then try <laughs> to repeat it on the way up. Because if I, let me just, I'm going to have to do a little bit more of my kitchen demonstrations. Mm. 
I was too uh, too late getting back in the gym to to get up to the upstairs gym. Bloody flooding, so the traffic in Bristol was shocking. Which is my excuse. And that's bear with me. Here's the um <laughs> here's the issue which I was referring to to Linda. So that is daughter flexion. Mm -hmm. And then if you need more daughter flexion, what will happen is the, the heel will come up. So you see, if, if I actually don't daughter flex at all, but lift the heel, I'm, get, I'm getting effective daughter flexion, but I then don't have the strength in the position. I get, I get them up. Cheers, Daisy. Yeah, you staying there? No, oh, Sam. <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So if I run out of dorsal flexion, oh, Daisy, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually blind, this dog, you know, hasn't properly, but well, she's got no eyes. <laughs> yeah, right. So if I run out of dorsal flexion. I compensate by lifting the heel. You see how that knee comes further forward? <laughs> See how that knee comes further forward now. So I get I get the range of movement that dorsal flexion is trying to give me, but then I lose all the strength and stability. So you're always getting that trade-off. And so if that happens in your circus get up, it's because you haven't got enough space in between the down hand and the down foot. Now, there's also a um, another aspect to that where you can have the down hand and the down foot being perfectly vertical, but if you if you position yourself over the down hand and the down foot inappropriately, you can be in that position where if this is the um, this is the hand. It means the shoulder goes outside of the foot and that's in real danger of collapse. So if you move, if you go into that position, I think bad if you can keep the heel on the floor because you'll get the range of movement. You'll get all of that yeah. space under the shoulder made available to you, but you'll get all of the strength of the dorsal flexion. That, that's where... If you look for the movement, it needs the uh, additional range of movement. It needs to be at the foot because if you get the extra range of movement by the hand, then that position becomes weak. The shoulder goes beyond the foot and it's going to collapse. However, if if the knee goes beyond the foot, well, that, that's fine because you suppose you've got that you've got an ankle joint, <laughs> uh -huh. which which gives you a lot more than the uh, the wrist will give you. Does this Makes sense. I mean, I'm uh, <laughs> try, trying to make the best visual picture here. With uh, to be honest, I didn't notice that I lifted my heel. So yeah. Yeah, I, I, and so that that's the first telltale sign that, mm -hmm. that you haven't got enough space. And so okay. you then say, why haven't I got enough space? Is it because the hand and the foot are too close together, or is it my orientation over? The hand and the foot, yeah. and you, you know, everyone's got a different shape, and so dependent on on yourself. Well, you know, that's what we'll find out. So if we go through a, a few of us here, and we'll see what we get. There's Timo. <laughs> yeah, it's him. We uh, say it's him. Yeah, yeah. So right now, my knee is, I think, ahead of my toe. Yeah, that, that's a strong position. And so right. that 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 allows the, the hips to be sort of closed, but then it gives them room to open. 
and that's hip extension, which is the strongest movement. So if it allows you to put hip extension into it, so for you now, what, what you need to do is go foot to foot. Right. The advantage of it, of it being stable while the hip is down. And then you're going to drive that right foot into the floor. And that will raise the hips slightly. And then it's hips backwards, shoulders forwards. So you can make sure you get the shoulders forwards by putting that hand down. You put that right hand down. But don't only do it when, you, when you've got the movement coming. So have, okay. have that right hand is ready and then try to lift the hips up and then hips back, shoulders forward on an in-breath. That's it. Exactly that. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that so that that's the, yeah. the movement you need to produce. Now, that was possibly slightly more explosive than we might want. But, right, right. But that that will have just given you stacks of awareness of what you need to produce. And so now yeah, if yeah, I can try so. to slow that down, produce it over the uh, longer period, then you, you've got that, that next move nailed. Big breath in. Perfect. Brilliant, mate. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, awesome that team feels like it's good. Well, but look, look at that. You were, you were having a conversation yeah, and you brought it back through. <laughs> Cobra Kai. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <brilliant>. <laughs> well nice. done, Timo. All right. Jules. That left knee down. That's it. Well done. Well done, mate. Now keep that left knee low and just sweep the foot round. Yeah. So that's that's great, mate. You can, um, yeah, Jules. Yeah. I'm going to say on, on that. That, that's all fine. You, you produce the movement there, which is a, a big tick in the box. Now you've just got to start looking at where you can polish it up. Because um, there was some technical flaws there, but because you've got decent movement skill, you were able to cope with it and get past it. Probably, as you were aware, one of the, the more obvious ones was on the way down, trying to just gracefully sweep that leg out. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, that was also the way on the way up. But because you're able to produce good power from the hips, you were able just to gloss over that and remember speed hides need. So find find which one you um you're more comfortable with, either going up or coming down. And then you, you want to try to make it as slow as possible and just gracefully sweep that foot out. Keep the knee low and just sweep that foot out. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll get you. Yeah. 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 Let's have a look at Rob because Rob uh, needs to focus on a similar move. Right, so now take your time, Rob. Now you want to think of that. Yes. Awesome, mate. That looked very smooth. It did, didn't it? <laughs> Rob, that's brilliant. <laughs> mate, that was almost as good as Liverpool's awesome 4 3 win over Fulham yesterday. Because <laughs> <No? laughs> uh, you'd, you'd struggled with that move before. Um, I think because Rob is so good with his squat, he, that would is the, the almost like the way he would try to compensate through that movement. 
Mm. Well, the fact he's been able to not just get it and get it so gracefully is uh, that's that's spot on, that mate. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Let's have a look at you, mate. Reach, reach towards the foot. That's it. And yes. Now think about the position. And if, in fact, Gary, I'm, I'm happy as laddie with that. With you, if you just now want to just bring the foot to the foot, keep that left knee down, and just bring that. Bring the no, no, bring the left foot to the right one. The right foot was in the right position. So bring the keep the left knee on the floor and bring the left foot to the right foot. Yep, and then come into the crawl. Brilliant. That's excellent, that Gary. Either you got one of those fancy uh Fancy iPads like Amber has, or Joni's doing a great job. <laughs> John, yeah. yeah. Gary, the, the, the improvement in your movement there and the way you were able to come up in that Turkish get-up is, yes. is enormous. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you think about where you started, if you could just go through that again, because there's just one or two bits where you could really polish it up and get the... Um, Good awareness. All right. Right, now pause there, mate. Pause there. It's a really good setup. Now, when you bring that right arm over to, to reach past the, the, the left hand, don't bring it over like an aeroplane wing because you're working again. That's it. Yes. Perfect. And now almost draw a line on the floor. Yep. Yeah? And now just, if you just reach towards your feet, there you go. Perfect, mate. And then now, just bring that left hand in a bit so you sit taller. Yeah. And then you bring the foot in as you've done there. Bring it round into the crawl. Gary. <laughs> mate. Nice. The level of improvement there. And then, what, what's, what's your crawling like now? Have you... Well, I was going to say, you got to get that. Got hard. <laughs> what you got to do from that position, the, fir the first thing you need to do is get into a quality quadruped position. So if you just do that now, get into a quality quadruped and do a four point check that the hands are underneath the shoulders. Yeah, that's good there. Now, the that right hand can, can get underneath the shoulder. There. Perfect. And now the first movement needs to be with the knee. So just move one of the knees forward. It doesn't have to be a long distance at all. It's just, just a small amount is enough. If you bring it too much, it, it, it'll completely... That's it. And then... The other knee, perfect. Now, just the knee. You're trying to go with the knee and the hand at the same time. It's impressive that that's telling you that it's available. But at the moment, you just want to go knee, opposite hand. Knee, opposite hand. There you go. Don't reach too far with the hand because the shoulder needs to go over the top of it. Bring the shoulder over that hand. <clears throat> There you go. Perfect. And then just do exactly that again. That's it. Perfect, Gary. And then if any time you feel yourself starting to be exposed, just reset to a good quadruped position. And if you can get to the point where you start using that for your mobility around the house to get from place to place, your progress will go through the roof, mate. I can guarantee. I mean, I mean, God knows you're already flying now. But um, yeah, nice well done, mate. That was excellent. Yay! Mm -hmm. It was all smiles in your household yesterday, wasn't it? 
Hmm. Well, by the way, Rob, you haven't posted your video in the uh, forum yet for the climbing. No, Sarah was watching. She didn't video it. <laughs> so if you can't reach with that hand, reach with the shoulder and the elbow. That's brilliant. Hey, uh -uh. How cool is that? Cool. That's controlled as well. Keep it controlled all the way down. Counter roll. Perfect, Kay. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Reese, what are you like with the uh, Turkish get up, mate? So, so start, start lying down, and then we want e each leg pointing out at forty-five degrees, straight leg. So that's that's up. No, no, so, Reese, it's all right. I'll, I'll talk you through the whole thing because you know I'm not sure if you've been you've been taught the moves yet. So lie down flat on your back. Now, both legs out to 45 degrees, so they're between 4 and 5 o'clock and between 7 and 8 o'clock on the clock face. So that's it. Just open them wide. Both legs, that's it. Now, keeping everything where it is, I want you to bend that left knee and put the flat of the foot on the floor and point the knee to the ceiling. That's it. So you still want it on that 45-degree angle. And then you want the right arm out as if it's on a crucifix, just the right arm. Now just bring it just a little bit below 90 degrees. That's it. Now, first movement, I want you to breathe in and fill your abdomen with a breath. And then I want you to take that left hand, touch the right hip, and then reach over that over the palm of the of the right hand. That's it. Perfect. Now, I went, whoa, 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 stay there. You've got to keep that foot flat on the floor. So pop it back where it was at that 45 degree angle. That's it. And then now, because you're going to push into the floor with that heel and you're going to draw an arc from using your left hand, draw an arc from your right hand round towards your right knee. And at the same time, you're going to flip that right hand over and get up onto the elbow. Just onto the elbow, mind. That's it. And stay on the elbow. Now, that right leg, leave it where it was, mate. Out nice and out straight. Right leg, just straighten the right leg. That's it. And now, right hand on the floor. And then you're going to reach towards your left foot and come up onto the right hand. That's it. And then that, yeah, and then that's the move there. And that was nice and slick, that, mate. And so going to come down. You then want to come down in exactly the same way. So what you're going to do, you're going to put your right hand down outside the right knee. That's it. And then you're going to rope. Well, yeah, you, you would have had the movement skill. You could keep the hip up and then rotate the foot out. But that's fine. Come down onto the elbow. And then come down onto the shoulder. That's it. So you need to have a look at the um, have a look at the videos of sort of everyone who was going through this, and and pay pay real attention to each of the transitions. It, it's not just about going from lying down up into half forward, half kneeling. It's about going from lying down to forward half kneeling, using all of the correct transitions. 
But you know, you've you've obviously got it all there. And so it's it's just becoming familiar with the steps and uh you'll have it nailed, mate. All right. Who haven't we done? Amber, have you done this? You're on mute at the moment. Fine if you want to stay there. Yep, and foot to foot. Keep that left knee low. That looked really good, Amber. You were almost there. If you need to use that right hand, use it. Excellent. And big breath in. Come up and sir. Forward off, Neyman. You need to take your hips back first. So you can then open the hinge. Oh, that's fine, Amber. We'll finish that one off another day. Tom? Excellent. That's really good. Keeping that right knee low. So the only way I would look for a, a bit of improvement there, or where you can try and be self indulgent with the, with the with the quality, it looked like when you come up onto the elbow, you had to use a bit of strength for that, and that's because you you didn't stay as far rolled as you could have done. I mean, just to try and create awareness of it. Do, do the same thing again now, but actually draw the arc on the floor. That, 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 draw the arc on the floor with that left hand. Mate, you've got a strange concept of the floor. <laughs> that, that hand, get that hand touching the floor all the way around. Because the only way you're going to do that is by rolling. That's it. And then... Given that experience of staying low there, just keep exploring that movement and find the sweet spot where if you, you know, if you actually draw it on the floor for the most part, that's going to be rolling too far, you know, and that, and then where you came up before, I mean, you can disagree if, if it is the case. It looked to me that you have to put a bit of strength into it. And that, that's the beauty of the Turkish get up. If you get the mechanics right, you just move. You, you don't put any strength or force into it at any time. And one of the best things about it is that, you, you know, you, you very rarely ever produce the, the perfect Turkish get-up. Or if you do, well, then that's time to go up in kettlebell weight or, or make it a, a bottom-up kettlebell. Well, maybe the problem is that I've been doing, using the kettlebell too often and it, it changes the dynamic yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and, and so what what you want to try to get into with the movement is instead of learning a set pattern, learn an understanding of the, the feedback of the mechanics. Learn an understanding of the feel, and so you know which direction you've got to move in because you inherently feel that's you know, uh, mechanically efficient, you'll sort of like, no, yeah, I can move into that direction. But if I'm going to go in that direction, I'm going to have to provide a bit of oomph. When you can get, getting your body talking to yourself like that, that that's, that's the objective. That's the whole objective of where we're going. You know, it, it's not learning a routine. It's educating your, your neurology. And we choose the movements that we choose because they're mechanically efficient. And so that would give your neurology the awareness of what good feels like. Because the thing is, everything else will, 
will feel either bad or, or less than good. And so you've got that awareness. So you know what good feels like, you know what bad feels like, then your neurology will know to make the right choice. You know? Um, right, we're coming near the end. So the final movement is obviously the um, uh, half kneel to stand. But we can do this one in a progression. We would normally finish off with the Turkish Gerek, which for those who, who can do the full one, that's what I like to finish with. But for the others, I will just do a prompt you kitchen floor demonstration. Blind dog no longer in the kitchen. Oh, God, the other dog's come in now. <laughs> yeah, no, he's all right. It's an adaption of something you will have seen before. So, first of all, get into the quadruped position. If you want to, we'll, we'll all be dogs, want to be bloody movie stars. He's in the quadruped position, he's just showing you. <laughs> yeah, and you can see here, nice spinal <laughs> position. <laughs> Hands are on the shoulders, feet on the hips. Yeah, I'm standing. Your work here is done. <laughs> Quality seating position. <laughs> Go on. Oh, what's that mean? Something interesting up there. Right, where were we? So, good quad. <laughs> Fine. Yes. <laughs> Any one, sorry, mate. Go on. <laughs> Any one, sorry, mate. Yeah. Right, take three. Yeah. Quadruped, breath in, foot comes forward as if you're gonna. Well, you can see the half kneeling posture from the uh, from the hips. Now for Timor and Gary. That's as far as I want you to go. For the others, again, in this position, I want you to then go into the dorsiflexion position. Keep that heel down. You need to move into that dorsiflex position. Then, Come back so your center of gravity is over that knee, over the down knee, and then you'll feel you can be balanced. And watch my hips now. The hips open the hinge, and that's how you then come up. Then, as you just practiced, doors are flex forward. And then, when you come up, you don't step forward, you drive this foot into the ground and you come. Straight up, and it's the same going down. It's you dorsiflex and you reach back with that foot. Now the going down is, is really hard, and so anyone who can get up, if there's an element of, of, of doubt as to whether you can complete it, don't try it. But to go through it all once again is quadruped. And forward and practice dorsal flexions, the heel staying down. Then, hello, Daisy. <laughs> and then hips back, breath in. Up, dorsal flex, look forward, big wide chest. Breathe in, come up. Right. Is K is at the top of the list here? Yeah. yeah. That's 
Great draw to flex in that case. It's my better leg. That's it. Reset your feet so you're fine. That's it. Now you've got to push down into the floor. So your center of gravity is going to stay. That's it. Brilliant. Push down. Outstanding, Kate. Brilliant. I'm not going back down that way, though, because my left leg oh, won't. Yeah, ab back. absolutely. I, I take it that's the first time you, you've tried that, is it? Yeah, that that was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, next in the queue here is Amber. But do you, do you want to pass on this, Amber? Do you? No. You're gonna give it a go. That's it. Do the first bit. Mhm. Mm That's it. Now just practice some dorsiflexion, backwards and forwards there. Keep control and integrate your breathing. Wow, Amber, that was good. Big breath in, big breath in. Under control, take the hips back when you go down. Hips got to go back when you go down. Amber, that was brilliant. <laughs> Outstanding. Great job. Tom, up to you if you want to do a uh, TGU with a kettlebell or you want to just run through that. Uh, well. well, I'm not going through that, mate. I suppose. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. New one in the armory. Yes, you do, man. Okay, Tom, when that when that foot comes forward, you you need it to be um, ninety degrees, no dorsal flexion. Yeah. 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 And so yeah, you, know, you can put, put put your hands down now. Yeah, no. you want the you want the foot outside of the arm, otherwise it's going to be too difficult. So yeah, and then now you can rock forwards into the dorsiflexion there, because ultimately, if when the hands are down, you're you're already in, like if you put the hips over the over your down knee, if you can look there, you can see you're already in a bit of dorsiflexion. So that denies you range of dorsiflexion because you're starting off ahead of the line. That's it. So if you go from there, now rock forward and backwards into dorsiflexion. Ex excellent. So you get way further forward. So now get that same far forward. Big wide chest, mate. Big wide chest. Brilliant. Great stuff, mate. That's really good as well. That will come on, mate. Well done. Yeah, Reese, you're up next, mate. <coughs> so pay attention to detail on this one, mate. Yep. So the um, knees on, on the hips slightly forward. That's it. Now get that so you got a right angle there, mate. Get that foot further forward. Bit just like we were talking to Tom. Keep the hands down, foot further forward, a little bit further. Oh, you're frozen. <laughs> Don't know if you... <laughs> well, that's a great that's transition. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll take your word for it. That was awesome, mate. Yeah, that was good. Because we, uh, your picture froze. But did you, did you get that feeling of pushing straight up rather than stepping forward? Yeah. Excellent. Well done, mate. Seymour. Let's see you, mate.
So pay attention to the position. Got to get that forward. It's got to be outside that hand if it's going to get a right angle. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, that's it. Perfect, mate. Perfect. Now maybe walk the hands over so that the, the shin is vertical. And then you can pull that other knee in a little bit. See if you can pull that left knee towards the midline. That's it. That's it. Perfect. Get a bit of breathing. Get stable. And now flex forward into dorsiflexion, keeping that right heel down. That's it. And just rock backwards and forwards, mate. That's excellent, Timo. Looking really stable. That's a good position to get experience in for you as well. That will definitely okay. transition to something like the bird dog. Right. And crawling. And what you can do, you put your left hand on the bed. Excellent. And then move your hips backwards. And then you're going to come up into forward half kneeling now. So bring that right foot a little bit more towards the midline. That's it. Now just pause and breathe. Pause and breathe. Take those hips back a little. And then basically you're going to use a squatting motion with your hips to bring yourself upright. Big wide chest as you come up. Big breath in. Breathe, cycle three breaths in that position, mate, and then come back down. Forced out breath, excellent. Left hand down. Take that right foot back. Big breath in, that's it. Brilliant, Timo. <laughs> oh, done. Outstanding, mate. Thank you. Outstanding. Mm. Thanks, <laughs> Voila. Santiago. Now you can maybe take that foot a little bit further forward. That's it. Because now both your left femur and your right tibia, both of them are vertical. That's what you want. And so that's going to give you maximum range of dorsiflexion. So now, full dog, get that knee forward. Get that right knee foot. That's it. You're bringing your chest forward instead of your knee. Now push that foot right down into the ground. Big wide chest. Not bad, but you tried to bring that foot forward before the torso lifted up. You want you want to drive the movement with the hips. And so if the hips open out, that will drive the torso up itself. Now, pause, pause, pause. What you've got there, you've got the foot underneath you. Get into the 90, get it so it's 90 degrees. Take the foot forward or the knee back, either way. And so now... That's it. Because one of the things is when you when you move into that's it. Take <laughs> being a perfectionist here, but you can bring that heel back just a tiny bit. That's it. So now when you go into dorsiflexion, you're loading the calf like a spring. And so you, you get that extra energy into it as well as the um the hip extension. Sorry, mate, is that a bit difficult holding that position while I'm going off? <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. a bit, yeah. I, I think you're aware of, of what we're after. Because the thing is, if your doors are flexed and your knee is flexed and your hip is flexed, when you've got that triple flexion, everything's folded up over that, over that forward foot. Now, when you come up, the, the rear foot's going to come off the ground. 
And if your center of gravity is behind the front foot, well, then you're unstable because the moment that other foot comes up, your center of gravity is outside your base of support. So if everything is folded up over that front foot, then when the rear foot comes up, it doesn't matter because everything is over that base of support. So if you maximal dorsal flexion now, and you can keep that hand on the wall, mate. Don't worry about that for now when you're learning the movements. So now if you drive that foot in, big wide chest, chest comes up, there you go. Perfect, mate. Uh -huh. And you can do the same thing now by if you dorsal flex to lower yourself and you don't step backwards, reach backwards with that other leg. Use your hand on the wall and you just keep pushing that foot into the floor and that'll control your descent. Stay over the foot. Yes, look at that. Hey, hey, hey. that was graceful. But I need the, the hand on the, on the that, floor. That's fine because you, you're just educating yourself with the technique yeah. first. Once you've learned the technique, then you go for exploiting it. That was great, mate. Cheers. Uh, let's see who is next up. Um, Gary, do you, do you want to sit this one out or do you want to? Yeah. Okay, don't, okay, mate. That's fine. And then Rob, it's you to finish the show, mate. That's so excellent. Keep, make sure that heals down. You've got stacks of dorsal flexion, you mate. All right, so now come up to forward half kneeling. That's it. Now, if you want to use that left hand, that can go on the sofa from there. Big wide chest, chest wide up. Excellent, mate. Now, if, if you had a wall next to you, you, you'd have been more, you'd have been better off there because obviously you had to keep your, um, your spine flexed to keep your hand down. And so that compromised your posture. Big breath in, reach with the foot. Uh, Rob, <laughs> it's awesome, mate. It great performance tonight, bud. Jim Cook. Mm -hmm. Right then, so uh, that. Did you, did you get your Did you get your Oh, it didn't, mm -hmm. mate. He was uh, he was trying to keep a low profile there. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, mate? Mm -hmm. Now, when you come up, focus on is everything in that right position. And that's it. Keep the chest high. Keep the chest high with, with your chest puffed out. Right. Shoulders back. Maximum dorsal flexion. And you push that foot into the floor and drive your hips through. That's it. Brilliant. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you all right, guys? Yeah, I thought it was going to hit my head there. Yeah, yeah I, I was equally worried, mate. <laughs> it's funny that, because I knew that it didn't feel right from before I tried to stand. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's a real good sign when your, yeah. your neurology is starting to talk to you like that. And that, yeah. that's that thing of it's the what, what you want to try to learn the difference between is. When your neurology is telling you, no, that's a step into the unknown, which you might be right, might be wrong, but who knows? Or when your neurology is saying, no, no, if I, if I do that, this is what's going to happen, which I think is what you're suggesting it was saying to you then. Mm, didn't feel which... safe. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I mean, I've done that before. I've done that move before. Mm. But then, just, no. I, I, I think it was probably the conscious effort that you were making to shoulders back and chest up and to so. keep the um, the chest vertical. So what your body was probably telling you, when I open up the hips, I'm going to fall backwards. Mm. Now, whether that was because you were arching backwards in the spine or potentially you weren't dorsiflexed enough and forward enough over the foot, which would mean if you went up straight, 
centre of gravity is behind the base of support, you're going to fall backwards. Push me backwards, yeah. 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 But you, the, the the way to, to resolve that, because you know we can guess all we like, is is if you can get in a, um, a position where, well, using the wall, if the wall helps, something in front of you might help, something on the side, mm. get your feeling of what will help you best and then explore that movement and, and, and absolutely listen to what it's telling you. In, in, in the same way you did there, mm. people people so often dismiss those that sort of internal conversation and and just consign it to mysticism. That if they're getting given a message, if you're getting given a message, well, who's bloody giving it to you? You know, you know, well, obviously, if I'm on mute, it probably help. <laughs> but the, the the message is uh, is coming to you from you know it's coming to you from your movement brain. Now, your movement brain isn't your speaking brain, so it can only communicate in feeling, you know? And so it, it, it's absolutely the, the way your brain works. It's got a whole list of different compartments, and they all communicate. And there's only one part that does conscious thinking and also one part that does speaking. And everybody thinks that the only part of your brain or, or the entirety of your brain is your cognitive thinking brain. And it, it's just wholly wrong. That's just one part. And it's the part that thinks the slowest, most imaginative. And it, it can take on complex logic tasks and, and be creative with it. But it's really, really slow. It's not quick enough to be able to calculate all of the moving parts and all of the implications of physics and also project into the future because that's what it's got to do. It's got to do all of the calculations of what's my position now? Where do I want to go? This is the way I'm going to try to do it. What's going to happen? And so your mind there obviously did those conversations and it went, Jules, what's going to happen is you're going to fall backwards, you know, and then you didn't have the trust in that or, you know, we're blindly following orders, <laughs> you know, and um, you know that that's what happened. But you know, there's there's a psychology lesson for today, anyway. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But you know that that is the way that the uh, that's the way your brain works. Mm -hmm. You know. But anyway, on that note, unless there is anyone else who's yeah. uh, staying quiet about missing that movement, yeah. uh, anyone any any questions about Anton? No, very good. Yeah. That was a great session, guys. Cheers, Steve. Cheers, Cheers, everyone. everyone. The next yeah. one will be Wednesday on rolling, and I think that will be Crispin. And then See you uh, Wednesday. Corey and Chelsea show on Thursday. Oh. All right, guys. Oh, I won't be there on Wednesday, unfortunately. Uh, so I will, um... <laughs> we'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry. Oh, well. oh, it's a big business meeting. Liverpool I'm playing. <laughs> All right. So Raro, great session. Yeah, thanks. Yeah.